Hello, welcome back to my Nature Book Review series. In this episode, I'll be looking at Mark Kalansky's COD. COD is a 1997 publication by American journalist Mark Kalansky. Taking us on a journey over the last 500 years, Kalansky sheds light on the long historical significance of this species for North Atlantic nations. From being a key component towards the founding of the United States to the industrialization of European countries, this book makes it clear that the world would not be as we know it without COD. Out of the 20,000 fish species that live in our ocean, few are as familiar or as beloved as the cod family, especially the North Atlantic cod, which has a range bordering on many developed nations. Here in the UK, cod and chips is almost a part of our culture. We eat about 100,000 tonnes of it every year. That's about the weight of equivalent of about 10 Eiffel Towers. And we've been fishing cod for quite a while. We've been cod fishing as goes back all the way to the time of the Vikings a thousand years ago. And certainly, no fish has had more of an impact on politics or foreign relations. However, since 1992, cod's become a poster species for overfishing ever since the Newfoundland stock completely collapsed. This led to the loss of about 40,000 jobs, which is still one of the largest layoffs of all time. And here on the other side of the pond, we've really struggled from stopping the same thing from happening to the North Sea stocks. So with all that in mind, having a biography of this species does make a lot of sense when you think about it, particularly now there are still lessons to be learned. The author of this book is Mark Lansky, who's actually equally at home writing children's fiction. And in the last 20 years, he scored uh, a couple of books uh, in his 2002 book on salt and his 2020 book on salmon. And I had read his book on salmon before reading Cod, so I was sort of familiar with his style. Having read Cod, I don't think the book reaches its full potential, but is incredibly interesting and I would still recommend it. So just a bit on the structure of the book. The book comes in three parts. Uh, part one is on the early history of cod fishing. Part two is on the development of the industry and the conflicts that emerged, particularly between Great Britain and Iceland. And then part three is the path to overexploitation. And a lot of the chapters are really quite nice and tight. They don't uh, overstay their welcome. And generally, I would say this book is really accessible. You don't need to be a marine biologist to really enjoy this book. However, there is one weird thing um, about this book. And having read Salmon, I think I can now call this a Mark Lansky watermark. Throughout the book, he sort of inserted these really random cod recipes that were you know, prepared about 100 years ago. And these normally come at the end of the chapters. And I just found them to be kind of out of place because the culinary side of cod isn't the focus of the book. It's the history of cod. And to have these sort of about 10 recipes or whatever that sort of shoved into this book, for me, did kind of feel a bit out of place. However, if, if you do like the history of cooking, uh, you will get a kick out of this and all power to you. So part one is the most difficult uh, part for me to review because there are things that I did like about it, but also things that I didn't really like about it. So I'll just get the negatives out of the way. Typically, when you write a book uh, on one species, the first chapter should all about chucking interesting things about that species to your audience to really sort of hook them in. That's why uh, books like The Gospel of the Eels and Salmon do work really well. However, in COD, the book actually starts talking about the Basque people of northern Spain and their sort of early fishing of cod before actually talking about the species itself in chapter two. And I would have switched these chapters around because the first chapter of this book is kind of weird. It doesn't feel like an opening to a book. It feels like it was cut and paste from somewhere in the middle section. And I do get the impression that maybe in an earlier draft, um, chapter two was actually the beginning of this book. I also would have liked a bit more on the Vikings, considering they were the first uh, group of people who really uh, fished cod. I think they deserved at least a chapter, but in this book, uh, they're only given a few short paragraphs. All that aside, though, there's a lot of really interesting things in part one. For me, I was really surprised just how important this species was to the development of some European nations, especially Iceland and also towards the early centuries of US settlement. I think there's a sound argument that if it wasn't for cod, the USA might not have actually got their independence as quickly as they did. And uh, another thing that really surprised me, probably the biggest thing that surprised me, was that cod fishing was actually a key factor towards uh, the slavery that developed in the West Indies. They were the main food staple of the slaves. 
And this really shocked me because, as you can imagine, dark chapters like this aren't exactly taught in Western curriculum. And I really didn't expect this book to shock me as it did. And I, I would say that part one uh, impressed me enough for me to recommend this book solely on that section. It is really, really interesting. So part two is on the development of the cod fishing industry and of the conflicts that developed between some of the countries fighting over cod, uh, especially Iceland and Great Britain. What I really liked about this section is that you really get a sense of the danger that came with cod fishing back in the day. Up until about 100 years ago, dozens upon dozens of people would die in pursuit of cod every year. And this book definitely succeeds in presenting cod fishing as a daunting yet irresistible venture. And another thing that I think part two succeeds in doing is that it doesn't get bogged down trying to explain the bureaucracy of the Cod Wars. It's kept it quite nice and tight and therefore accessible. If I was to give one criticism for this part, I think some ports are mentioned quite a few times and I think maybe just having a map just to show us where some of these places are would have been handy. But I think overall part two is really solid and just as interesting as part one. The last part of this book is on the ultimate overexploitation of cod and for me is a bit of a step down from the last two sections. There are things I like about it. One of the things that I really like is that um, how it explains how the cod didn't come back to the seas around Newfoundland after fishing really halted in 1992. It's a great example of uh, once you remove a species from an ecosystem, the ecosystem changes to the point where the species might no longer be able to thrive in that ecosystem anymore. And I'll be quite surprised uh, actually if in the next few decades, if cod will ever be as abundant off the coast of Newfoundland as they were 50 years ago. However, part three, I was really disappointed kind of with the ending, which I found kind of a bit weak. And this is exactly how I felt after reading Salmon. I think Mark Lansky's uh, strength is kind of in his middle sections of his book rather than the ending. The ending of a book like this kind of needed a reflective chapter on what we do now. This is the mistakes we've done in the past. What do we do now to ensure that cod is fished sustainably? And we don't really get there. The ending of the book isn't exactly bleak or anything, but it's kind of nothingy on the whole. It doesn't really give a scope for what we need to do in the years ahead. However, considering this book actually did come out over 20 years ago, I would say that if you really want to know um, what needs to be done for uh, fishing sustainably, the best place to look for that would now be online. However, up until that point, the book did really impress me, so it didn't kind of tamper on how I felt about it overall, and I would still recommend you reading this. Cod is a very, very interesting book, and was probably one of the most memorable books that I read last year. If you have read it already, uh, do leave a comment. I'd be very interested to know your thoughts about this book. And as usual, uh, if there's any books you'd like me to review, uh, then please do leave a comment below as well. Uh, up until next time, thank you very much for watching and have an excellent rest of your day.